Hi guys, today we're going to look at blending uh, Extasol data with uh, MongoDB using Apache Drill. This is a good example of how you would blend data using uh, Drill's uh, multiple data source capabilities and make it look like a single data set, which uh, reduces the need for ETL and data processing if your data set is reasonably clean, or if you just want to do ad hoc analysis over an existing data set that might be in a live data database and you don't want to have to uh, remove it or put it into a different data store. So today we're going to look at, at Drill. The version I'm running is a custom version from Trunk because the latest release uh, doesn't include some of the bits and pieces we need for it to work with Exasol. This is coming in the next release, but for now we're just running off Trunk. If you use MySQL as your uh, backing database, then you don't have this problem. So this is just um, an Exasol um, and a few other databases issue. But be rest assured, in the next drill release, this will be available. So let's get started. To do, to do today's uh, tutorial, I'm going to sit in the Apache Drill uh, console. It's a web-based console that saves me having to drop down to a terminal and interact with, with Drill in that manner. And so we're just going to have a quick look at um, how it hangs together. So up in the top, we've got the ability to run queries. We've got some profiles. We've got the storage. And this is the uh, important bit for today's demo. So out of the box, uh, the enabled storage plugins are the class path and the DFS plugin. And so for today, I've had to enable two separate ones. And one of them is the Mongo plugin. So if I just click on update, you can see that I haven't changed the default settings. I have a MongoDB server running locally on my laptop uh, with the Northwind data set, which you can find on GitHub uh, as a collection, a database and a collection within MongoDB. So all I've done is enabled that, uh, that MongoDB connection. Then if I go back and I have a look at the Exasol uh, connection, so this is a new one. This is the new JDBC connection that came in 1.2. And we'll obviously see some upgrades and updates as, as the next uh, Apache drill releases are, are due out. So in this one, I want to use Exasol as a data source. So what I'm trying to mimic is if you had an operational data store in Mongo, which was storing orders or a, you know, a CMS or something like that to back into a website, but you also had a high performance uh, column store database that you used as an aggregation pool and as analysis server to run your analytics over. But in some cases, depending on if you have some live data coming into your, to your Mongo cluster, or if you just have some data stored in one but not the other, you would want to be able to use the two data stores. And ordinarily, what you would have to do is run an ETL job to extract the data from one and pass it over to the other. And of course, we don't want that to happen. So. What we've done here is told um, Exasol, uh, sorry, told uh, Apache Drill that we're going to use a JDBC type. We've passed it the Exasol JDBC driver and the URL that I want it to connect to, a username and password, and told it it's enabled. That's it. We have done nothing else. So when I update that and save that um, to the uh, storage engine, you can see that I have my four storage plugins available. And of course, you don't have to use Exasol or Mongo. You can use any type of, of drill-supported backing data store. So you could use um, Exasol and connect it to Hive, to HBase, or two different JDBC servers. You know, there's, there's unlimited um, configuration options here. So this is just one uh, example. So if I then look in the uh, query area, so you could use um, the SQL line client to do this, or Squirrel, or your favorite SQL browser. But handily, Apache Drill provides uh, the ability to run queries from within uh, the browser. So with a bit of luck, if I do a select from for the Exasol stuff. So you can see here, what I've done is I've told it I'm using my Exasol um, storage plugin, uh, the ExaDB, which is the default database I connect to for Exasol, the schema that I want to use, and then I want to select from my fact freight analysis table, which is just a sample 
uh, table that I created using some data from the Northwind database and aggregated up just as an example in this case. So if I hit the submit button, you can see what it's done is gone away to the Exasol server, which sits on a remote server somewhere, um, executes my query, and obviously brings the result back to the to the console. So uh, with that, I proved that I can connect to Exasol, I can query Exasol, and you know I can retrieve the data, which is nothing new apart from its through drill. Um, you know you can obviously do that with any SQL uh, based client. So expanding upon this a bit more, if I go back to my query and say, okay, well, I want to be able to um, uh, look up some Mongo data. So if I then have a look at um, the Mongo database, hopefully this one works. Select star from, um, yeah. So just going back to that query, uh, select star from Mongo, again, is the storage engine. Um, and then I'm using the Northwind database within the Mongo server itself. And I'm interested in the customer's um, collection of, of, of records. So when I do a select star, um, uh, Apache Drill converts your SQL query into Mongo query language. We'll go off to the server and bring that data back from Mongo and then translate it into a tabular result set for you. So, you know, you can see here, obviously, we've got contact name, contact title, the city, um, and, you know, in the Northwind data set, we've got 91 different entries. So, you know, that's that's a good way of being able to query Mongo just without having to learn the Mongo query dialect. And so I think these days, Drill supports most of the Mongo uh, optimizations and so the aggregate framework and all that type of stuff. And if it doesn't, then it will try its best to do it in memory for you. So with that in mind, I can then um, write a slightly more complex query, but not really, that is just uh, an SQL join across the two different data sources. So here that I'm saying, OK, I want to use my fact freight analysis table, and I want to use my Mongo customers table, and I want to say where the customer ID from one equals the customer ID from another, then bring me back uh, the columns that I've selected. So when I hit submit, it will go away. And so the great thing here is it's accessing Mongo, it's accessing um, Exasol on, you know, live on the fly, uh, pushes the queries out to the two uh, engines, brings back the result set, and then combines them as one um, specific result set for you to be able to analyze. So here I can see, you know, I've got my customers coming back from Mongo. So Alfred's here, who lives in Germany, um, in uh, uh, September 1997, we paid 85 pounds worth of freight for two orders that he had shipped. You know, so instantly you can start doing, in this case, freight analysis using um, SQL type clients across two different data sources, which is fantastic. But of course, I want to be able to extend this further. I want my end users to be able to interact with it without having to be able to write an SQL query. So one last thing we have to do within Apache Drill is uh, in the query, we then have to create a view that Seiku or your analytics tool can uh, hook into. So here's my uh, view query. And this says create a view that's called customer freight. And I want to run pretty much the query we just looked at um, and export that to a view so then it looks like a single table to anyone else so if i then do select star from my view so i've now got a single table view effectively um that acts as a single data source that um you know that uh, tools and interactivity can be plugged in on top of and so the tools don't have to figure out which data source to hit uh, drill will do that for them the only thing i've added to this view is using um is add an id to the to the column so that when seiku comes to use it then we know which um row pertains to which apart from that that was exactly the same query as the one we just looked at so with that all in mind, I'll then go over to Seiku. 
and so I'm just going to run through a quick bit of schema design so you guys can see how that would work. So I created this customer freight view and I connected to uh, drill using the schema designer. And if I drop that into the canvas and then select my ID, um, you know, I've got my customer freight table. Now we only have one table, you know, obviously if you had more, you might have a date dimension in there, you might have something else and you can start to uh, you know, build the connectivity out. But for this, we've just got one simple table. So once I've um, selected customer freight, as you can see here at the top, there's loads of other tables that are available to me um, from both Exasol and also from uh, Mongo. And so I could select from this lot as well. Uh, once I've got that one selected, I can then uh, go into the physical schema. Now I'm not going to create an entire schema. I'm just going to run through how uh, it would work. Um, and so we create a cube that's called freight analysis um, and add that to my available fields. And then I want to create a couple of dimensions um, of the data we have within our customer freight table. So what I noticed with the data is we've got year and month and we've also obviously got a, a bunch of customer information. So I want to be able to create those dimensions. So if I open up one, and then start adding. So we've got that ID field, and the ID field is the key field. So I'll add that, but I won't check has hierarchy because I don't want it visible to the end user. I then want to be able to add in company name. So I'll create a company name attribute, but I do want the users to be able to use this field. So I can select has hierarchy for this one. Uh, and I also want to know the country in this example. So if I select country and click OK. So I've got two attributes in my ID um, in the dimension. And obviously, I'd like to give it a nice name. So customers and select um, ID as my key field. And then hit update. And obviously, you can see the UI update. But then go into the second dimension. And here, I want to create like a, a, a basic date dimension. So I've as I said, I've got year and month kicking around. So um, I can add year. Um, and I don't want to add, a, I don't want to have hierarchy here because I want to create a distinct hierarchy, which is a bit different. Um, so I add year and then I also want to add month. So again, I select that. Um, and I need my ID key field. So add ID. As I said, I want to create a hierarchy. So in the bottom, I want to create um, a date hierarchy and it's all member name is all dates. And then from the list of attributes, I select year and month and click on add. And so you can see that it's added this uh, date hierarchy to my uh, dimension. And again, I want to give that a proper name. So I'll also call it date and I will select the ID as the key field, click on the update. So I've created my two dimensions. And then in my measure groups, I'll create one that's called default. Uh, select customer freight as my table. And then uh, freight cost as a measure name. And uh, select freight. And so I effectively this measure, I'm just saying I want a sum of the freight cost um, in my as my measure and so obviously you can add as many measures as you want you don't have to limit it to one you can also create multiple measure groups finally i just want to link in a dimensions or my two dimensions so customers and also date um, add those and so you can see now we've got a measure group that's called default in my cube we've got the two dimensions that are available and so that's pretty much it you know that's a basic schema that will allow me to um do quick customer freight analysis of my uh, distributed data set. So I click the Save button, and then up on the top, I can click on the uh, Create Schema button, and that will save it to the repository. And then if I go into the uh, admin console, you can see I've got this uh, schema schema here. This is my uh, drill schema. I should possibly call it something more useful. Um, and then up in the top, I've added a data source called Drill. Um, added the URL to connect to Drill. Um, I've selected my schema in the schema box and added the JWC uh, driver class. And there's no username or password, so I've left that blank. Um, and that's created my uh, data source. And then that means I can start analyzing my data. And so if I look up in here, I can click the refresh cubes. That will make sure that my schema is valid and the data source is valid. 
And once that is the case, then from my drop down in the top left, I can select my uh, Apache Drill Cube. And so this means that instantly that end users without any query writing knowledge can start doing data analysis over Exasol, over Mongo, over Hive, blend them all together without uh, having to use any ETL or cent central data store. Um, and they can start to, you know, interrogate the data on a on an ad hoc basis. So if I wanted to know the company name um, and the average freight, I can dump that in. And so at this point, drill obviously goes off to the various data sources, runs the queries it needs to return the data that's available and display that as a result set on the table. So I can then say, okay, well, there's my average freight costs and I want to sort from, you know, highest to lowest uh, or lowest to highest. And so there we go, I've got a descending list of freight costs. And if I want to visualize that on the table, then I can start to visualize that instantly um, within the table itself. And so hopefully that provides a bit of insight. Obviously, there's various other bits and pieces you can do um, with, with Seiku itself. And so if um, you know you want to start manipulating your data on a on an ad hoc basis, then you can do that uh, very straightforward, very easily using Mongo or um, a JDBC driver to start blending your data um, and providing advanced analytics to end users. Uh, there's much more available um, uh, Seiku tutorial wise on the website and on the wiki. Um, and so I won't go through that too much here, but you know, obviously it shows the potential of you being able to manipulate your data and, an and interrogate your data using Apache Drill. So I hope that was useful and uh, come back soon. <laughs>